Right, I'm just going to talk very briefly about a subject I think that, that terrifies people probably quite rightly, and that's, that's childbirth in the wilderness. I think it goes without saying this should never happen. People, we shouldn't be seeing heavily pregnant women in, in very, very remote situations, certainly not from, from in, 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 the, in the leisure market, but it does happen. And in many cases, particularly if, if, it's, um, if it's adventurers, leisure, people walking, these babies are likely to be quite premature because, because obviously the, uh, the delivery wasn't expected imminently. It's not impossible to find yourself as a, as a medic in that situation. Um, if you are in that situation, however, just a few basic principles. The delivery is going to happen. There is very little you are going to do to be able to change that. Your role really is going to be to catch the infant as, as, it, as it is delivered. Then, then two really important things to do after delivery of the baby. And the, the, mo the first thing is, is to cut the, um, cut the umbilical cord. Um, we've all seen that done, we've all seen it done on television, but the principle really, hold the baby below the level of placenta, maximising the blood from the placenta into the newborn. Tie off the cord with whatever you have. It could be a shoelace, it could be a hair tie, it could be a bit of string. And, th and then cut through the cord, leaving, leaving a decent amount on the, on, on the baby end, certainly. All of that can be tidied up later in hospital. So once the cord is cut and we're looking at the baby, ideally we need a sort of separate, separate session, really, to have a look at the mother. But I'm just going to talk briefly about the baby. The most important thing about neonatal resuscitation in the wilderness is drying the infant. When babies come out, they're wet and they get cold so quickly. So briskly rubbing the baby, get something around it, a towel, something like that. Dry the baby and keep drying. And that's often the stimulus for the first scream. If that scream doesn't happen, the, 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 the sort of sense of, of dread as you're waiting for the baby to cry, if that scream doesn't happen, two options really. If we think that they're not breathing or they have a heart rate of less than 100, we need to start bag valve ventila uh, ventilation or, or mouth to mouth and get some air in and out of the baby's lungs. In almost every case, that will start the baby breathing. And neonatal resuscitation, in contrast to most other resuscitation in the wilderness, is actually very effective. Get air moving in and out of the lungs and in almost every situation that baby will then start crying and screaming. If the, if the heart rate falls below 60 or there isn't any respiratory effort, at that point we talk about starting compressions. The outlook for that is poorer. So really in summary, it shouldn't happen. Occasionally it does happen. And if you can remember those two crucial things about drying the baby, really, really drying the baby and looking at keeping that baby warm. And then secondly, if they're not breathing, just getting some air in and out of the lungs, you've given that baby a much greater chance of survival in a very difficult start to life.